this is active recall these are book notes i'm trying these book note cards and this episode is about primal branding i took some of the concepts from primal branding and applied it to or saw how it applied to one of my favorite things pro wrestling it used to be one of my favorite things i, I don't follow it so closely anymore but definitely grew up during uh, monday night wars things like that so this kind of came up uh i've been reading ryan holiday's book conspiracy and these note cards are and the note card system is um inspired by how ryan holiday has his note card systems that he uses for everything along with the writing books but um hulk hogan is kind of uh a big part of this conspiracy with peter teal and taking down gawker media anyway check that book out that's really good um but i'll be talking about some of the things from primal branding which is a book by patrick hanlon um so just some questions why does brand matter why, why do brands matter what are all the seven brand elements and how can you use this knowledge um the seven elements are creed, creation story, icons, non-believers, rituals, sacred words, and leaders. This is pretty... The, the book is kind of centered around all of them, explaining the seven elements of primal brands and the seven... or the primal code, I think is what it's called. Um, and these are the seven elements and I'm going to talk about how different professional wrestlers have used this for personal branding. Professional wrestlers were masters of personal brands before social media existed. A lot of popular media people today, especially in sports, uh, take a lot of cues from professional wrestling. Uh, Conor McC Gregor and Floyd Mayweather acknowledge um, just like the entertainment aspect of it um, and pro wrestling's history in entertainment and also things like going back to like Muhammad Ali and his inspiration from professional wrestling also. Anyway, I'll just jump into it. So the first one, Creed. Creed is your mission statement, a company's mission statement. NWO's creed was pretty much chaos. Um, if you think of like United States of America, we have the constitution and a bunch of other things that you memorize growing up in school. And it just, these different things exemplify um, like what that brand stands for. And that, that is a cool thing in the book. It just talks about how brands aren't just companies. They can also be, countries have a brand and different things have different movements are brands and of course like the personal brand is not it is more and more popular these days uh number two creation story so back to hulk hogan back to conspiracy different conspiracy this was where i, I guess in the modern one peter Thiel was revealed to be like this third man involved in um the trial between hulk hogan and gawker um in the past Hulk Hogan was the third man. He revealed himself to be the third man, partners with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, and that was the creation story for the NWO. And that was a pretty powerful story um, just for many years. Uh, WCW versus NWO was driven by this and defined the WCW brand and th there are just a lot of different creation stories in wrestling where Shawn Michaels breaking up with Marty Jannetty, kicking him and then throwing him through Brutus the Barber Beefcake's window is a creation story. It's the end of the Rockers, but the creation of the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Icons, logos, different things, uh, symbols that represent um, different wrestlers, so... Ultimate Warrior was one of the first popular people to use face paint along with like Legion of Doom. A lot of times you'll see 
people think of brands and the first thing that they think about are icons and logos but the book does talk about how there are more elements than just a logo but a logo can be really really important when's the last time you walked through a grocery store and you didn't see a nike symbol or a coca-cola symbol and being in a grocery store number four non-believers to have something to build a following those people have to relate also to things that you're against not just things that you're for this makes it stronger um this makes your belief stronger if you have something that you can go against i grew up loving bret hart and then i was conflicted being american and there was the whole america versus canada thing i probably still sided with bret hart um and hated Shawn michaels so I don't know that he was the best representative at the time, DX Shawn Michaels and the United States. So uh, those two, the non-believers were the ones on the other side. And you'll see non-believers and things like this in Mac versus PC, um, different sports teams have rival teams. It makes things stronger. It doesn't mean that you don't respect the other people. Um, you, like Shawn Michaels, you know, in the, in the story, you know, they, they respect each other as wrestlers, but just can't stand each other as people. And some of that carried on over into real life where there was probably even less respect um, than their fake personas. Number five, rituals. Opponents on the ground. The Rock starts kicking his arms in. You know what's coming. People's elbow. And for the viewers, uh, my ritual growing up, if it's Monday night, then... I'm looking at the hour. I put Nitro on, put that first hour on without um, having to flip to Raw. And then as it approaches, depending on what year it is, what month it is, what's hot at the time, I might stay on Nitro. I might not flip to Raw at all. Or I'm completely transitioned to Raw. I'm not really checking WCW anymore. And that was just like this watching ritual. Um, and then sometimes it's the ritual of putting, you know, Sunday night pay per view, but. My parents aren't going to order it, so you just watch the scrambled version of it and try to listen like it's a radio. Oh yeah, here it is. Kicking kicking the arms in. Um, now we're on sacred words. This might be the best thing that wrestlers are known for. Slogans, things that they say, doing the promos. What does Austin 316 stand for? You know, there's this classic um where he's just, <laughs> just telling jake jake the snake to head back to the locker room and uh, thump his bible and all that and everyone has them um bret hart best there is best there was and uh, sean michaels i guess just a sexy boy um and that's another thing is just uh the ritual and combining that with sacred words um entrance music everyone knows like the structure of a match and entrance music is what kicks it off you you hear that music and you know what's coming um last one leaders you have in wrestling like these personal brands where the wrestlers are the leaders of their own brand and then it goes out further like there's individuals and there's tag teams and sometimes you're part of a faction like nwo then you're part of the brand so you were wcw or nwo and it just, it just goes out and out and out and then within wwf at the time there's like two leaders and um you had like stone cold representing the people and then uh, mr mcmahon and he kind of represents the corporate evil version of the company. But leaders are a big part of brands. And you can see that in companies, too, where sometimes the face of the company is the founder. Uh, you have Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. And then there are some where the leader isn't like they have a quieter role. But there is a, still a face of the company. And. Um, even uh, people do know Phil Knight, but the leaders in a lot of cases are the athletes who wear it and people look toward them. Like 
you know who the people with like Nike shoes are. And even in recent years, like Kanye and Adidas. Um, so yeah, you can think of like different brands and the leaders there. And even in the case where it's a quiet, the founder of the company has a quieter role uh, publicly, they're still really important uh, to the company as leaders because that trickles down to the employees and what the employees make and uh, what the company really represents. Um, and yeah, that, that becomes just a part of the company. So that's that for Primal Branding uh, by Patrick Hanlon. Check that out. Go get the network if you want uh, to watch some old school wrestling. And hit thumbs up if you like this. Thanks for checking it out. I'll make more book notes in the future.